So today what we're looking at is um, scale factor, and we're going to use an actual apartment. This I pulled off the internet is an actual one bedroom apartment in Laurel. If you look at the top, it is one bedroom and one bath, and it has a den. The rent is $1,334 a month plus a $300 deposit. That's not really something that's going to be terribly important, but it may help you in the future. Okay. So it doesn't say, however, what the total square footage is. So what I'm going to do, it actually it does, but it didn't quite fit with my math activity. So I'm going to ask you first to put up here where it says square footage. It is 1,485 square feet. And that may help you with this activity. And just as a side, because we've been talking about the cost of living and um, poverty, what I figured out is that if you want to rent this apartment comfortably and not struggle with money, you would have to make $16.67 an hour in order to live comfortably in this one bedroom apartment. Okay? The reason why, how I figure this out, it is a total of $13.34 per month. We're just going to double that so that you have comfort for like utilities, food, rent, car, insurance, for a total of $2,668. $2,668. And then if you divide that by four weeks, that's how much a month you would have to get, pay, or how, how many weeks in a month. So you'd have to get, get paid $667 per week. Every week there's 40 hours. Everybody pretty much works 40 hours a week for a total of $16.67 an hour. Okay. That's just as a side, since we've been talking about um, change matters and how um, poverty have, like how poverty affects your living conditions. So just a little side. Bob, what question do you have? Is that right? I think so because it looks so lot A one bedroom? Yeah, except she turned the den into my room along with the cats. So awesome. But yes, yeah, so I, I have to share a room with two smiley cats. Okay. Yeah. All right. And they sleep on my face. So. All right. So, what I have done for you at the in order to save you some time is I've measured the length and the width of the apartment, the total number of total dimensions of the apartment. So from end to end, from this end right here to this end right here, it's actually on paper 16 and a half centimeters. Okay. And from this end right here to this end right here is 10 centimeters. So right now, what can you observe about this apartment? It is, is it an actual, like, very nice, neat rectangle? Is this a nice, neat rectangle? It's just like all square, all rectangle, straight sides. So what observations can you make about this rectangle, about the apartment? Casey. Some of it is dented in. Dented in, okay, or cut away, right. So this is where you would come in. This is your, your front door right here, okay? And so you notice that this is not your part of your living space. So you have to take that out of the square footage. Does that make sense? All right. So what we're going to do is, now flip this over, because we're going to take a look at what our task is for today. You're going to need a pencil, a ruler with centimeters, which don't everybody get up. We're going to we're gonna do that. I'll pass out centimeter, centimeter rulers in a second. Your drawing of your apartment floor plan and the scale for the apartment. The scale for the apartment is one centimeter is going to equal three feet. So if you want to make a ratio or a proportion, your scale is going to be one centimeter is three feet. Now, could you also put three feet, one centimeter? Is that okay? Yeah. Why not? I see. I hear some yeses and some noes. Why is it no? Okay. Okay. So, all right. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Explain that again. So you're, you're saying is you can't have three feet on your paper? Right. 
you're right. But what I'm saying is if I set this up so that I just put all the centimeters on the bottom, can I put it so that if I'm looking back, this side is 10 centimeters long, okay? Can I set up a proportion so that 10, 10 centimeters is on the top and X is on the bottom? Or X is on the top and 10 centimeters is on the bottom? Is that okay? Hmm. I see some yeses and some not so good yeses and some like basically. Joseph, what do you reckon? Uh, is that okay? Can I put centimeters on top and feet on the bottom? Or feet on the top? Centimeters well, on the like the, uh, Does it matter? It's fine. It's fine, right. Okay, so it is. It's fine. I can put whatever I want on the top or the bottom, but the trick is do you notice that I put centimeters on top, centimeters on top, feet on the bottom? feet on the bottom. So as long as I keep myself organized, I can't mix up centimeters. I can't put centimeters on top and then centimeters on the bottom. Because then those ratios, those fractions, you see there's an equal sign right there? That means that those ratios, those fractions are not equal anymore because I'm comparing centimeters and feet in the same fraction. Can't do it. Can't do it. So no matter what, you can set it up with one centimeter over three feet or three feet over one centimeter. It does not matter as long as you keep the same units on the top and the same units on the bottom. How am I doing so far? Let me see a one if you are like, oh my gosh, you better be, you may as well be speaking Chinese, and a five if you're like, I got this, I'm cool. Good, all right, good. I, I can take that, I can handle that. Fours and fives, threes, fours, five, that's good, all right. So now, look at this, our first question. How long would the 10 centimeter side be in real life? Oh my goodness, I just set up that ratio for you. So on your paper under number one, I'm not gonna do the math for you, but I'm certainly gonna give you, I choose, hmm, I choose to put my centimeters on top and my feet on the bottom, okay? Which means my scale is one centimeter is three feet, so Blake, what goes on the top and the bottom of my next ratio? I've got one centimeter equals three feet. So how do I, how's my second fraction look? How long would the 10 centimeter side be in real life? That's right. And what do I put on the bottom? Yep. Why put an X? Because I don't know how many feet. That's what it's asking me. Make sense? Good so far? Yes, Luke, do you have a question? You're good? Making sense? Love it, dude. Love it. All right. So then, number two, let's just set these up. We're going to put the centimeters on the top again. We're going to put the feet on the bottom which means my scale is the same, one centimeter equals three feet. What does my second fraction now look like? Remember, we're trying to come up with equivalent fractions. If I used up here one centimeter for three feet, 10 centimeters equals I don't know feet, then Casey, how, what am I gonna set up for my second fraction here? I got one centimeter equals three feet. What do I got over here? What's my second fraction gonna look like? Don't be shy, just shout it out. 16.5 right on the top, and then one on the bottom. X, because I don't know how many feet. That's what they're asking me. Everybody make sense? All right. You want to see one more just so you're kind of comfortable with it? Set up one more? Okay, all right. Measure the inner walls of the bathroom. This, I mean, the bedroom, sorry. This is where you're going to need your array. So, I'll be with you in just one second. Okay, here's my centimeter. Oh, you know what? The blue one's going to show up on camera better. So I got to flip back. So I'm going to measure right here the inner walls, which means the inside the black line. I've got six centimeters as a length and ooh, four and a half. So right now, for number three, You've got six centimeters for a length. Oh shoot, put that on the wrong one. Sorry. 
six centimeters for our length and 4.5 centimeters for the width. You guys want to check my math? That's cool. I'll, sit, I'll hand out the rulers in a second. All right. All right. Good so far? All right. So now your task is to continue on. Is the scale going to be any different in any one of these problems? Am I always going to use 1 over 3 or 3 over 1? Yes, because I'm using the same scale. I'm going to use the same math for all my problems. What questions do you have for me right now? What questions? Because I'm sure as soon as I'm like, okay, you're on your own, all kinds of hands are going to be shaking up in the air, so come on. Oh, questions? Love it. All right, you are off and running. I'm coming around to help.